Oh, he said he suffered without the gate. He said, let us for, go forth therefore unto him without the camp. What bearing his reproach. You know, so many times he talked to so many people, so many Christians, and all they're thinking, oh God, I need you to bless me abundantly. I need more money. I need more of this, more of this, and more of that. But you know what? We've got to learn how to yield ourselves. We might have a reproach as far as what this world looks. Uh, they may come against you. They may talk about you. They may criticize you. Uh, they may say, well, you've gone off of the deep end. Uh, you don't have to pray so much. You don't have to go to church so much. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, we got to learn how to sacrifice. Uh, we got to learn how to crucify this flesh and begin to yield ourselves unto him uh, that we might be able to know him and have a relationship with him. Uh, we got to learn how to go outside the gate and learn how to cry out unto him that we might know him and have a relationship because that's what he died for that we might have a relationship with our heavenly father because that's what he desires for us to be his children listening for his voice I remember reading about Elisha or Elijah one where they had performed all of these miracles. They had saw so many of the false prophets that day. But then what happened? Jezebel said, I'm going to come and I'm going to have your life. I'm going to have your life. What happened? He run. He ran from the presence of the Lord just because God had already performed. Looks like he would have seen what God had done and know that God was not going to leave him there. You know what, if we could just realize what God has done. I look at my life and I think, God, oh God, you have brought me so far. You've forgiven me of so much. I know where I was at. I know where I'd walked at. I know the sinner that I was. And I'm not bragging about the sin that I was in. But I'm here to tell you that I know how far in sin you can go. But I also know how far that God will come to lift you up and to bring you out of sin and establish your goings in him. But we got to be willing to surrender ourselves unto him that we might be able to know him and have fellowship with him as he desires for us to do. He shed his blood and gave his life all that we could have life and that we might walk with him and know him. Oh, Jesus was willing to surrender outside the camp. He was really willing to go outside the gate. He was willing to walk up Calvary's hill as they led him to that place called the skull of Golgotha's hill. As they took him there, you know, maybe he began to think as he took the steps up Calvary's hill that he thought, well, this one is for that one. You know, whenever we was on the cross, they sing the song sometimes, I was on his mind. I don't know if I was on his mind when he was on the cross, but I'd like to think that I was. I would like to think that I was on his mind. I know that no doubt he was probably thinking uh, of the mass of sinner people that was out there uh, uh, that would surrender their life unto God and walk with their heavenly father uh, because of what he was willing to do uh, because his blood was going to be pure uh, it was going to be holy uh, because he had never been in under the yoke of bondage uh, of sin uh, like the red heifer uh, he couldn't have a spot uh, he couldn't have a blemish uh, and he could never been in under a yoke uh, and you know what Jesus Christ I was never in under the yoke of bondage and so he set us free free from the sin free from the power of sin free from the bondage of sin but we got to learn how to surrender ourselves unto him and say as Paul said no longer I that liveth but Christ that liveth in me no longer I that walk but Christ you walk and talk through me Lord that you might be able uh, to use me to bring honor and glory and praise unto your name. Yes, you. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. I'm so glad that he was willing to go. I'm so glad that he was willing to lay down of his life. I'm so glad that he was willing to say, 
Father God, I surrender even in the garden as they began to pray. And they said his blood became as great, uh, uh, his blood uh, sweat became as great drops of blood falling under the ground. He prayed so hard that his sweat became as blood drops to the ground. But you know what? He prayed, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Whenever he went to the garden, he prayed. What? To get victory over his flesh. Because you know what? Flesh and carnality does not want to surrender itself unto the will and to the mind of God. So that's why he tells us, I believe it's in Romans, the 12th chapter, that we've got to crucify our flesh. We bring it, got to bring it in under under subjection to the will and to the mind of God. Oh, we got to yield ourselves unto Him. Oh, we got to yield ourselves unto God oh, that we might bring honor and glory and praise.